Today we're going to be talking about all things Polaroid, Polaroid Monday. Um, I've got lots of thoughts that I want to share. First off, super important, if you remember a couple of weeks ago in a previous post, I was in London, in Ireland, and I was talking about x-ray machines, CT machines, and what it'll do to your Polaroid film. In the video, I was talking to people at Heathrow Airport, and they said they never will run a, a pack of Polaroid through the CT machine. Um, if, it, if you're in that security line, they'll do a hand inspect, but they will run it through an x-ray machine. And if you look at the back of older Polaroid film, anything from 2023 back, it has no indication on the back of anything saying don't x-ray or anything like that. I noticed just today when I was looking at some new film, here's some 600 film that's in the 24 production. On the very back there, you can see it says protect from heat. That's a good thing. Do not x-ray, do not CT scan. Also, a new iType film on the back that has the exact same warning. So first off, I want to congratulate Polaroid on putting this on their packaging. Thank God. Additionally, Polaroid, please reach out to Homeland Security and different security agencies and letting them know that Polaroid film should always 100% be hand inspected. Now, if you remember my post, I did a thing where I sent some stuff through an x-ray in Heathrow and it looked okay, but not all the film was okay. I have a portrait right here of my wife Eve, and as you can see, it's got muddy contrast and it has lines running through it. Those lines, that contrast, that lack of saturation is a result of the x-ray machine. Fortunately, I only had a small amount of film going through that day. I photograph and use the vast majority of my film. So my policy going forward, I'm gonna very politely point out this on the back of the label. I'm hoping Polaroid does additional due diligence and reaches out to airport security people around the world, however you guys are gonna do that. And I'm always, 100% of the time, asking for a hand inspect no matter what. So let's get into today's post. I've got some really interesting cameras in front of me, and I want to talk about some tests that I've been running. So I've been looking at my Mint, uh, right here, Mint modified uh, SX70 camera. This is set up to do the iType film, as well as my modified uh, SX70 camera by Dennis at Chromatic Parts. Once again, can also shoot iType film. But there are other cameras on the market that I think we should look at, and I think they have some advantages and things to think about. So first off in the middle, we have the i2 camera. I've written extensive videos about that. I'm not gonna go into it to too much of detail. Um, however, still just to reiterate that this camera overexposes almost everything by two thirds of a stop. Easy enough to correct on the top using the exposure compensation dial. I will say though, the more I use this camera, I really still like it. But I do find that you've gotta be careful with that exposure compensation dial on top. Putting it in and out of my bag it can accidentally get knocked. It's a pretty easy uh, 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 wedge to be able to move here. I wish maybe it clicked a little more and held a little more. Um, this just could be my shooting style, but I'm noticing that when I work with the camera. Um, the other two cameras that I wanna talk about here, I've just done an extensive uh, article here on the Pronto RF that I had modified by Jake, the instant camera guy, to accept iType film and regular 600 film. I really like this camera. But I also purchased this camera. This is the Polaroid Sun 660. Um, and it's a really interesting camera, but it's a very misunderstood camera because there are over 50 different variations of the Polaroid 600 camera. And when I was online looking at this camera and what it could do, there's a lot of misinformation out there. People are confusing different models. So the Sun 660, which is the model that I like the, boat the most, that also has an LED built into the back and the back of the top flash indicating your flash status. That's really important. This is my favorite model of this. There are models that don't have this that have it built into the eye cup. Not my favorite. I prefer to see it up top. I just think it's cleaner and easier to work with. Additionally, what's neat about this camera is if you read the instruction manual, and I happen to have the instruction manual, 
Um, this camera was designed, according to Polaroid, to always use a flash. In every situation, they recommend using a flash, indoors or outdoors. Now, if you think about this, it kind of makes sense. Polaroid has a limited exposure latitude, and by using a flash, a fill flash in particular, in this case, from two feet out to 14 feet, it's going to bring up the shadows. It's going to control the highlights and fill those shadows, and it's a big flash. Look at the size of the flash on this camera compared to the size of the flash on the new i2. This is significantly larger, and as a result, it's gonna feel smoother, cleaner, and better. I've hit zero red eye or any sorts of issues whatsoever with this flash. It just looks great. Now, of course, I can add auxiliary flashes, like one by uh, Mint or flash bars on the RF or on either of the two SX-70s. Uh, I even have uh, flash handles that mount onto the side. So there's lots of different flash options. But it's interesting to me, and it got me thinking a lot when I was looking at this camera, and I decided to spend a few minutes today talking about this camera and why I think it's really special within this lineup. So one of the most important things about this camera is to understand the proper specifications. I went online and there's all sorts of misinformation. So the Sun 660 is an autofocus camera. It uses sonar, it has the gold disc right here in the front. It's not as sophisticated as a setup as in the SX-70 sonar models or the 680s, 690s, but it still is a good autofocus model. A lot of people say that this is a fixed element. It is a single element. That is not true. The Sun 660 has a uh, plastic element in the front, and then it also has a disc with four additional lenses behind. And the autofocus will trigger which additional lens it needs to have proper sharpness based upon the autofocus's uh, suggestion for the focus point, which is pretty much dead center in the frame. I have found the focus on this to be perfect every single time. So the Sun 660 does have proper autofocus. It is not a fixed focus lens like lots of other models of the 600. Additionally, the 660 is not an f14, it's not an f11, it's an f10 lens. And I know it's an f10 because it's right here in the instruction manual. If you have an original instruction manual, it says it's an f10. So that's important. That f10 is not that different than the f9.4 in my Pronto RF. Yes, it's different than the f8 in the SX70 style cameras, However, it's not F14, it's not F11, it's F10. So that's one big correction. Additionally, the shutter speeds go from one third of a second out to a one two hundredth of a second. Yes, and it's F10 to F45. Um, the camera also has the ability on the front here to lighten or darken the image. You need to slide it all the way over in one direction or the other in order to activate that. And when you look through the viewfinder, there's a really nice little warning in the bottom that says that you've activated the slider. When the slider is in the neutral central position, there's absolutely no warning on the inside. It's a clean viewfinder, it's a little small, but I absolutely love it. Um, the flash again is desired to fire all the time. Um, in order to disable the flash, on the front of the camera here, there is the release button, and if you just press the release button, it will automatically fire the flash, does the focus, does the whole exposure. Right behind it, there is a smaller release button. If you pull that, it deactivates the flash, and you can have a really nice non-flash scene. However, to be honest, I use the flash on every single exposure, even outside on a bright sunny day, just helps open those shadows a little tiny bit. Another thing about this camera, because you don't have the critical focus the way you have in an SX-70 camera or the, or the critical focus the way you have in the RF camera, it does have the ability to override the autofocus. Up underneath the flash here, there's a little tiny white button. If you press that white button in when you take a picture and hold it in the whole time, it deactivates the focus basically for infinity. So everything 12 feet and beyond is going to be in focus. Um, this is also incredibly helpful if you're trying to shoot through a window 
um, you know, m much like the problem on the I2, because it uses LiDAR and it won't see through the glass and focus properly, I've written all about that, on this particular camera, by overriding that, it'll just set it to a distance. Now, of course, there are a lot more sophisticated features built into uh, a modified SX-70, um, you know, or the RF, which I really love. But what I like about this camera is the simplicity. It's lightened, it's darkened, it has a big flash, and it closes and protects the entire front of the camera. The nice part, too, is that this was the most popular series of cameras, the 600. Polaroid made just an enormous quantity of these cameras. Um, but once again, if I'm going to buy a Sun 660, you want to look for one that has LEDs, in my opinion, on the back of, of the flash. It should only say Polaroid, and it has a gold ring going around the lens itself. Um, all that indicates that it actually has those four disc elements and you're going to have a proper autofocus. So I am going to send this camera off to Jake at the Instant Camera Guy to have it modified for iType film the same way I did my RF cameras. Um, I really like the AAA setup. It's clean, it's simple, it doesn't get in the way, and it's just convenient to be able to shoot either film. The RF right now is absolutely one of my favorite cameras. I know once I have this camera modified and cleaned, I'm sure the sensor and stuff has some corrosion on it, it's really gonna be a great walk around camera as well. It's just so simple. And having that iType compatibility is really what I'm looking for. So what I thought I would do now is a couple of tests where I'm gonna take a picture of my wife in our kitchen and I'm going to use the RF with a flash because it's really hard contrasty side light. I'm gonna use the camera by Dennis uh, with a flash. I'll probably use the mint uh, uh, bar set to uh, 600 speed. And I'm going to use the built-in flash on the uh, Polaroid uh, 660 Sun. And we're just gonna take a look at the quality between each one. All right, so I've got the shot all set up. Eve, say hi. Hello. And it's a real high contrast shot. I've used it a lot. We're in our kitchen. You got this enormous window to the side. So the contrast between the highlight and the shadow portion is enormous, especially for Polaroid from material. So let's take a look at the three cameras and see how they look. All right, so we have our three exposures here. The first exposure, this is with the SX-70 camera modified by Chromatic Parts using the mint flash bar. It looks really good. It's really sharp, great color. It's a little overall bright, but it feels nice. The second image, this is done with the RF, once again, with the mint flash bar. Uh, I think it looks really good. The uh, overall scene feels more natural to me. And the third one is with the new Sun 660. Once again, I love it. I think the balance between her and the background is the best. I think the one with Dennis is the brightest, and yet I'm gravitating really more towards these two. What's interesting is I did an additional exposure. So here is the one, uh, the SX-70. Uh, here is the RF. Here is the uh, uh, 660 Sun. And here is one where the sun was really coming in. And you can see just how much contrast there was. The sun was just absolutely creating harsh shadows on the uh, tabletop or on the counter. And you can see how well the 660 handled that. It's clean, it's sharp, it's the right amount of fill. If you don't use a flash, this is what it'll look like. So once again, here's the high contrast scene with flash. This is on the 660. And here, is with no flash. I mean, there are times and places where I could see this being appropriate, um, but if you're going for shadow information and highlight control, the flash is the way to go. Okay, so in conclusion, when photographing with the Polaroid camera, it doesn't really matter which model. If you have the ability to use a flash, you should seriously consider using the flash. It really just helps tame the contrast and open up your shadows. Unless you're going for a really particular look, Flash in Polaroid is your friend. Thank you very much for listening. Now go shoot some film.